All right, welcome back, Florida Football Insiders Podcast. Hopefully you enjoyed our chat with Joey Johnston talking a little USF and their resurgence, and now we have to unfortunately go to the other side of the ledger in one of the most dramatic games that we've seen in a very long time in college football, and obviously it's Central Florida, probably the maybe the toughest loss in their program history. Uh, we're going to bring in Matt Marshall, the beat writer for the Orlando Sentinel, covers all things UCF as well as all things Orlando sports. Welcome back, Matt. How are you doing this morning? I'm well. I'm well. You were you were in the building Saturday, uh, in the, well, as the devastating uh, comeback win for the Baylor Bears unfolded there in the fourth quarter. If you fans, if you, if you didn't weren't paying attention a whole lot, middle late third quarter, about four minutes to go in the third quarter, UCF is up thirty five to seven on Baylor, who's had a little bit of a down year so far this year, and lo and behold. As I'm watching the I'm watching the updates throughout the fourth quarter, I just see it getting a little closer. And all of a sudden I look up and I see the Baylor kicker coming out late in the fourth quarter. And I'm thinking to myself, they're not kicking a field goal here unless it's to win the game or to tie the game. What has happened here? You were in the building. Give us a little sense of of obviously at 35 to 7, the the Knights are playing great. Timmy McClain is doing his thing. Talk to me about the momentum of that building, uh, about what point you started to think, uh-oh, we could have something going on here. Well, you know, what's interesting about that game is, you know, UCF came out really kind of on fire. You know, they scored 21 points in the first eight minutes, including like uh, Johnny Richardson's 70-yard yard touchdown run with 12, took about 12 seconds to get on, you know, the touchdown. That was their first touchdown in their Big 12 home opener. Um, you know, everything looked to be going well. They jumped out to a 35-7 lead. Offense was doing well. Defense was containing Baylor. You know, about middle of the third quarter, all of a sudden things just kind of stalled. You know, UCF offense couldn't find a way to get itself moving. Baylor started to get some some plays here or there, and they started to chip away at it. Um, and you just kept – you got this feeling all of a sudden that this game momentum was shifting. And I think it was probably about the fourth quarter when, you know, R.J. Harvey, UCF running back, fumbled a snap in a wildcat formation, and, and Baylor's defensive uh, – uh, quarterback picks it up and runs it back 72 yards for a touchdown and all of a sudden the wind just went out of the sails for UCF and that was kind of the moment that Gus Malzahn told us that he felt like it was really the backbreaker you know they they really felt like they could still find a way to win this game they were driving deep in Baylor territory they felt like they could kick a field goal at, at the least or maybe get a touchdown and that would put the game away but instead Baylor takes advantage of it UCF never was able to recover and and Baylor comes down and and scores the kicks a field goal to go up uh, 36 35 UCF has one final chance and Colton Boomer misses a I think 59 yard field goal which really never had a chance uh you know and, and and UCF suffers its largest comeback loss you know and they they just they couldn't find a way to to finish this game and that's been kind of the story for this program this year is they haven't been able to finish some of these games. They couldn't finish against Kansas State. They were in it in the late in the third quarter in that game as well. Couldn't find a way to win it as well. So now they, they go. They got to move forward. They got to go on the road again this week to play Kansas. So there's a lot of, I think, uh, post game Saturday and, and on Monday there was a lot yeah. of just kind of bewilderment and how this kind of got away from them so quickly. And give Dave Aranda credit at 35 to seven. He actually kicked a field goal in the third quarter where most teams coaches would have probably gone for it, try to get the seven points, give him credit. He kicked a field goal to make it 35 to 10. And then you, and then Baylor goes on a 26 0 run in the fourth quarter from a scoring perspective to obviously they win the game 20 36, but give Aranda credit. A lot of coaches wouldn't kick that field goal in the third quarter even though uh, when you're down by four touchdowns, knowing you still have to score four more touchdowns to win the game. So give Aranda some credit uh, for Baylor. At U UCF gives up 192 yards of offense in the fourth quarter, which is, un I mean, it's just hard to believe. Obviously, they get outscored 26 uh, nothing. You mentioned kind of the offense got stagnant. What did, did, did Gus Malzahn at some point in the fourth quarter take a timeout to, to try to calm everybody down, or did it just let the game keep, keep flowing like it was and just, Hope to God you can hang on. Well, you know, he, he, he kind of let the game flow as, as it was. I mean, he took timeouts later in, in, in the fourth. But, you know, right. I mean, it, it just – it was kind of the same – some of the same storylines they've experienced, especially in the Kansas State loss. You know, Timmy McClain is doing well. Then he gets to a point where he's got a uh, – he's scrambling around and he throws an interception where he had a guy, Randy Pitt, in the tight end was wide open. He underthrows the ball and, and Baylor gets the pick. This is another example of where UCF was in the – was basically, you know, inside their opponent's 40 – and had an opportunity where if they just kind of kept kept taking care of the football, 
they could score there maybe, you know I mean? And that would have kind of salt, maybe could have put the end of this game as well. But, you know, that's been kind of the MO for their quarterbacks is a lot of their turnovers have occurred inside their opponents, you know, uh, inside the points 40. And, you know, when you turn the ball over like that, uh, and you don't, and you limit yourself to have ability to maybe to score that kind of hurt him as well. And then you got, like I said, then you got the fumble that happened with RJ Harvey where it was a bad snap. He was in a wildcat and he fumbled the ball and, and, and Baylor takes advantage of it. And I mean, I, again, those are some of the mistakes that UCF has had over the last couple of weeks. Um, they've been trying to find a way to fix this. They, they've got to limit these turnovers. They've got to find a way to, you know, defensively stop some teams. I mean, I, I mean, teams have owned them in the fourth quarter, especially over the last three, uh, last two or three games. I think they've been outscored like 37 to seven in the right. fourth quarter. Um, what's even better, a, a even worse stat is that the teams are converting third downs in the fourth quarter at like a 70% rate, where meanwhile, UCF is only converting two of 10 over the last two fourth quarters. So they're struggling in some ways to try to finish these games, as I mentioned. And if they can do that, you know, they feel like they're right there. And if you look at some of the things, they are right in those games. Yeah. But what happens is teams just finally take advantage of them in the fourth quarter and they wear them down. Some of that could be symptomatic of you're playing in a a, a league. It's the Big 12 now. You've got bigger, better, stronger players. Coaches don't want to admit that. Players don't want to admit that. But you got to wonder if that's partly what's what's going on over the last two weeks. Talk about the quarterback situation. Obviously, Timmy McLean has played the last couple of weeks. They've scored a bunch of points. He's had some turnovers. Um, what is what is the John Rice Plumley situation as far as moving forward? And is Timmy McLean earned played enough, played well enough to still get some opportunities to play even if Plumley is healthy? Yeah, um, John Rice Plumley was cleared on Friday, is what Gus Malzahn told us. He did suit up for the Baylor game, okay. but did not I wasn't gonna play, but Gus said that he was the emergency quarterback. Uh, you know, he hadn't had a chance to practice all week. They didn't want to throw him out there and, and have something bad happen. They said going into this week that, that Plumlee was going to practice uh, along with Timmy, and they would make a decision probably on Wednesday or what how they were going to move forward with this. I asked Gus specifically, could you see a situation where you go a two-quarterback system for a while just to just to let maybe get John Rice a little bit? And he said, I'm not ready to talk about that yet or, 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 or decide that yet. We're going to wait till Wednesday and see how things go. I'm not sure. You know, Timmy has played well, relatively well. I mean, you talked about it. There are times he does some things that the coaches kind of cringe at. He's a little freestyle, which they'd like him to kind of stay in the system. But they understand that John Rice Plumley is, is is the guy, and they really they'd like to get him back. They would love to not have to use him this week, believe me, because they get a bye week next week, and then they go into Oklahoma. So in the mind, my guess is they would love to have him rest another week, and then get the bye week, and then have him come back for the Oklahoma game. But that situation kind of went out the window after the Baylor loss. Now all of a sudden you got to figure out what's going on. I'm not, they haven't leaned either way. It wouldn't shock me if Timmy starts the game and they see how things go offensively. Right. And if he struggles a little bit or the offense falls behind a little, maybe they bring in John Rice Plumley. I mean, again, this is a knee, this is supposedly a knee injury, you know, that he suffered um, in that Boise state game. I'm sure they'd love to let him get a little more opportunity to heal that and be a hundred percent. But we'll, we'll see what happens. I mean, I think this is a point where, Gus realizes if, if John Rice is healthy, they're going to probably put him out there against Kansas. And, and, and Timmy McClain, for those in the, in the uh, here listening in the state of Florida, former USF quarterback who was a big, rec- good recruit. He's, I think he's from the Orlando area. I believe he's from kind of in that in the Orlando area. Transferred after you know he lost the job to the former Baylor quarterback Gary Bohannon, who went to USF. Timmy McLean left USF, went to UCF, and is, is, is getting some opportunity. And you saw if you, if you if you were on social media, you saw the highlight play he made on fourth down on the last drive where he ran about 150 yards in the backfield and completed a pass. And you know he's an electric athlete, but the consistency of will he stay in the offense? And like you mentioned, we don't want so much free flow out of him. Uh, a little uh, too a little too much of that uh, is cannot can be detrimental sometimes, but. We know he's an athlete. He's a, you know, he kind of reminds me of Michael Vick kind of guy. He can run around, a left-handed guy, got a big arm. And uh, you mentioned going to Kansas this week, an interesting interesting matchup there at UCF 0-2. Kansas coming off losing to Texas. You know, Jalen Daniels didn't play last week at Texas with some back issues. You would think he would be back to play this week, but a tricky spot going to Lawrence. Yeah, very much so. And I know that um, Lance Leopold, the Kansas coach, shut on Monday that, Jalen Daniels didn't practice on Monday. They're still dealing with what those issues are with his back. Um, there's a possibility he may not play either. So there's a little bit of, of coach uh, sportsmanship going on here where some yeah. of us to speak where, you know, I think Gus doesn't want to let him know what they're going to throw out there. And I think Kansas doesn't want to let him know who's going to be out there as well. So it's it's going to be interesting. It's like, and, you, and you're right about Timmy. Timmy went to Seminole High here locally. Um, guy who's got a lot of ability to kind of move around the pocket. 
Um, I think he struggled a little bit at times with the mid range throws, you know, I mean, he could, but he also adds that extra dimension of when things break down, he could take off running much like John Rice can do as well. But the thing that coaches kind of stress to us is that they'd like him to stay within the system, not right. freestyle so much, because I think that's where he gets into trouble. Um, and John Rice just has more experience, you know, has been in this offense and understands exactly what they're trying to do. And, um, you know, so we'll, we'll see how that goes going to Kansas. I mean, they've struggled on the road. Um, you know, even the Boise State win, which was on the road, they had to remember they had to come back to win that game. They did play very well. Um, they needed a last minute field goal to win that game. So they've got to find a way to get on the road. This is a banged up team. Gus said this today. I mean, they've they've had eight different offensive linemen who've had to had to step in and, and start a game this year. You know, the Ricky Barber, their top one of their top defensive guy line guys, has been out in and out of the lineup for the last couple of weeks. Um, you know, the center spot's been been banged up. Um, they've had to, they've lost uh, Walter Yates, their linebacker went out in the game against Baylor. So Gus is saying, listen, we're trying to get as healthy as we can. They'd love to get that bye week. They want to try to get everyone back before they go take on Oklahoma. And um, so it's, it's, it's going to be a challenge that way. They've got to understand, but, but G the, Gus isn't making any excuses. He understands that they're going to have, that was their, the role they were kind of handed to in the card they were handed. So they're going to have to find a way to win some of these games. What's the what's the one position group that really needs to step up there, step up a little bit? It sounds like defensively they've struggled in the second half of games. What's the one? Is it a defensive line? Is it secondary uh, or or just maybe the inability of the offense to maintain what they've been doing? What's the one group that Gus or or you have noticed that, that he, they think really needs to play a little bit better here in the second half of the year? I, I think two groups in my mind. One of them is defensive line. And I mean, again, I mentioned Ricky Barber being banged up and that hasn't helped them. But, you know, they came out and they had four sacks against Baylor. But all that damage was done early on in the game. You know, once they got in that, fourth, like I said, late third quarter, fourth quarter, they didn't really get much of a push. And I think that's something that they're going to have to do. They're going to have to either rotate in more guys or whatever it takes to get better pressure. Because when they get pressure on, on the quarterback – they're all, you know, they're able to kind of create some turnovers and things like that. They haven't been able to do that late in games. So they've got to find a way to step up and do that late in the game. Um, and, and I, I think running, I think the, uh, the, the running game, you know, I mean, listen, you know, the, the first three weeks, they, they led the country in, in rushing and, and, you know, they've got kind of away from it a little bit. Some of that's because their offensive line has been banged up, but some of it also is the fact that, you know, they're just, once they get behind in some of these games, they have to find a way to kind of, they get away from it a little bit. So they need RJ Harvey to, who's been kind of their workhorse. He needs to have a big game. Um, Johnny Richardson, who had explosive runs the last two weeks, but doesn't get utilized as much later in the games. I think they need to continue to, to, to get him out there as well. And then I think the quarterback too, you know, they, they're so trying to protect the quarterback position that I think they've gotten away at times for where they could use the running game to maybe kind of open some things up as well. So I think if they run the football, like they've done in the first two or three weeks, I think they'll, they'll be fine, but you know, we'll see what happens in the game against Kansas. And that's the core of what Gus Gus really wants to do. Everybody thinks Gus is wide open, but he's really not. He's a running – he likes to run the ball with the running quarterback with Plumlee and back to his Auburn days. He That's when he's had his most success with his with a running quarterback and that kind of thing as far as in the running game. So, well, Matt Rochelle, you're a great follow on Twitter. I know you've showed you, – you've posted some great stuff on the on your different road trips, restaurants and such, and – you were you've been in Boise, you've been in Manhattan, Kansas. Now you go to Lawrence, Kansas. I've actually played in Lawrence, Kansas, but way back in the day when I played at UAB. So I, I've I've actually played in that stadium. And uh, yeah, Lawrence is your typical college town, obviously with the Jayhawks and and uh, Fog Allen Fieldhouse and all that stuff. So I don't know if you've ever been before, but you'll probably you'll enjoy yeah. that, and uh, that'll be a fun little trip for you. And I, I we look forward to uh, all your great uh, little your Twitter. Twitter pictures and of the, of the dining experiences and such that I know you you enjoy. You can find Matt at the uh, online at uh, on X at OS Matt Merchell and uh, tell all the great fans where they can find all your great work with the Orlando Sentinel. Yeah, they can go to orlandosentinel.com to catch out everything's going on. Or as you said, follow me on X. Um, that's where I usually post everything. And I'm looking forward to it. This has been a fun being in the Big 12 for the first time and, and checking out some of these college towns for the first. And it's been uh, and fans have really embraced it as well. They're, they're, they're coming out and traveling. And so it's going to be interesting. And they're going to need that kind of support over the next couple of weeks. Now, is Oklahoma coming to coming to Orlando? Is that a home no, game? No, no, it's Norman in Norman. So okay. it's going to be a challenge for them. And, they, and they've and they got, a, obviously, an Oklahoma is playing really well. So um, And Dylan Gabriel, obviously, former UCF yes. quarterback, is, is yes. having a big year. So. Um, it's going to be kind of extra incentive uh, when they go to, to Oklahoma in a couple of weeks. We'll keep up the great work, Matt, and we'll definitely check in as we get towards the end of the year here. All right. Sounds good. Thanks a lot. All right.